world needs more people with curious minds. People who aren't afraid to admit when they don't know something. We need to take the time to encourage more lifelong learners. At least, that's my goal with this podcast. I think the future is at stake. But at the same time, I do believe that a more informed population can and will move humanity forward. All we have to do is keep learning. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the podcast. I hope you're having a good day today, and uh, if you aren't, I hope this episode helps turn it around. I think it's going to be a good one. I can, I can really feel it. So I recently learned about one of the theories that explains deja vu. And the reason that I say one of the theories is because Michael Molina said on a TED Talks video that there are over 40 theories that attempt to explain deja vu. However, none of those theories are conclusive. At the end of the day, we still can't scientifically explain what's occurring when you experience deja vu. And that's why I would like to take this episode to dive into some of those theories. Because the truth is, science can't come to a consensus on what deja vu is. And I think... Exploring some of these theories will maybe trigger some of you to take a really long look at some of the other unexplained aspects of our experience in the universe. And I think that's a good thing. I'm not going to sit here and go over all 40 theories today because that would take forever. But what I am going to do is touch on a few of the theories to give you an idea of how much they vary from one another. I want to be able to show you how little that we still understand about the human mind by giving you a couple of scientific theories on what deja vu is that are just wildly different from one another. So for starters, let's go back to that theory that I heard about recently. Some scientists believe that deja vu is a memory phenomenon in which, quote, we encounter a situation that is similar to an actual memory, but we can't recall that memory. So our brain recognizes the similarities between our current experience and one in the past. We're left with a feeling of familiarity that we can't quite place. Now that comes from Scientific American writer Sabrina Steyerwalt. She also writes, quote, Beyond this general explanation, there are dozens of theories that attempt to explain why our memories might malfunction in this way. Some say it's a short, or it's like a short circuit in our brain leading to a long versus short-term memory so that new incoming information goes straight to long-term memory instead of making a stop in the short-term memory bank. Basically, what she's saying is one of the short-term memories that you usually forget, like what you had for lunch last Tuesday, it's stored in long-term memory by accident. And the next time you have a similar life experience, your brain pulls that long-term memory forward, and then you experience deja vu. Now, the article goes on to say, others, bl- or sorry, quote, others blame the rhinal cortex, the area of the brain that signals that something feels familiar, for somehow being triggered without the memories to back it up. Another theory is that deja vu is associated with false memories, memories that feel real but aren't. This form of deja vu would be similar to the feeling when you can't differentiate between something that really happened versus a dream. However, researchers have begun to push back on this idea. And to me, that's a great example about what's so crazy about deja vu, is that part of the end where it says, however, researchers have begun to push back on this idea. I just told you like four explanations that only have to do with memory being the problem. And scientists can't even reach a conclusion on one of those. At the end of the day, there's still no scientific agreement on what deja vu is and also what's causing it. And I think some people feel like the mystery should be a little more unsettling to us than it is. But I personally think it's incredible. 
I mean, if there were 40 possible explanations as to why we have eyebrows, it would have probably caused a few wars by now. For real. Like, that difference of how did these eyebrows come to be probably would have led us to some wars because ultimately it would come back to how are we even here and that disagreement seems throughout history to be a huge problem. And yet, when it comes to deja vu, we just accept it because I think it just seems so inherently confusing to us that we almost don't expect anyone to have an explanation for it. Like when you experience deja vu, it's such a unique thing that I think you, th- you start to think to yourself, I, I mean, I don't even know how anyone could understand what this is. And I think that idea is rare in the world today because we expect to have a concrete answer for everything, right? It's like everything feels as though you should be able to Google it and just find out what the answer is right away. And when that Google search comes back with a bunch of non-conclusive answers, people tend to get angry or they get conspiratorial or they just give up on the idea altogether. But yet with something like deja vu, we all experience this crazy phenomenon and it really is so strange to us that we don't expect an easy Google search necessarily. And I wish more people realized that a lot of things in the world are just as unexplainable and complex. And we should understand that we don't need a conclusion right this second. As long as the right people, the scientists, are working on finding the answer, then we should be able to accept that the world is very complicated. And at least take the time to continue looking into whatever unexplained phenomenon we're researching. But I digress. Back to the theories. So I looked at psychology today and found out that there are also scientists who believe the cause of deja vu could be neurological rather than memory-based. The author of um, the article that I read on psychology today was named Dr. Navid Sala. He wrote that, quote, neurological Explanations of deja vu attribute the phenomenon to either a small temporal lobe seizure in a person without epilepsy or to a delay in neurological transmission between eyes, ears, or other perceptual organs and higher order processing centers in the brain. Essentially, you could be experiencing a small seizure in your temporal lobe or some sort of delay of your senses that would cause an issue with that processing part of your brain, and that's what triggers deja vu. At least, that's what this theory says. Regardless, this is a vastly different explanation than the explanation that evolves around memories. Remember, just because deja vu happens in your brain and the different explanations all relate to your brain doesn't mean the explanations are similar at all. For example, it's kind of like the fact that just because a fight broke out inside of Popeye's when I was eating there and I was a freshman in high school, and the explanation for that fight involves someone inside the restaurant. It doesn't mean that when a girl ran inside Popeye's and called the cashier a ho-ass bitch, that that's somehow related to everyone else inside the restaurant. I mean, sure, technically it's possible that that particular situation didn't cause the fight. I mean, technically my outfit could have been so cool that it caused everyone to be stressed out because they didn't have it, and that stress led to the fight. Or maybe the lady at the table next to me got up and she went to go get napkins and the cashier took offense to that and that led to a brawl. But just because the possible explanations occurred in the same place as the fight doesn't mean those explanations are at all similar to each other. Now on the topic of deja vu, there is an explanation that does vary a little bit from the status quo and that's the one that I want to end on. Because I think it gives me a chance to give you guys a little bit of a glimpse into how I see the world. You see, I'm a person who believes that we can't really ever be 
100% sure of anything. Because to be honest, none of us are privy to the source code of the universe. So I don't think we can be 100% sure of anything. How do we really know? I think we can be 99.9% .9 sure. But you have to save that 0.1% of certainty for a lot of reasons. I mean, for example, future scientific discoveries could change our fundamental understanding of major parts of the universe and of our existence. And also, I don't know if you've noticed, but humans lie constantly. And it's also entirely possible that down the line, we could find out that some concepts that are wildly agreed on are actually built on lies. And so I always think it's important to ask questions and at the same time leave room to admit that even if you feel sure of something, it is possible that it's not still correct. For example, I am 99.9% .9 sure that we are not living in the matrix. But if we were living in the matrix, you wouldn't know it anyway. So 99.9% .9 sure in that situation sounds good to me. But I also want to make sure that I make the point to say that with 99.9% .9 certainty on anything, I think you're sort of signing a social contract. And that contract says that you're agreeing to use that 0.1% of uncertainty to fuel a desire for knowledge and to seek out information, but not to use it to exaggerate and promote a bunch of wild conspiracy theories under the guise of, well, I can't be 100% sure of anything. You still have to live a somewhat normal, productive life, even if you like to question things. That 0.1% at the end of the day cannot consume your life. I think that at times people try to act as though there's a thin line between curiosity and schizophrenia, to be honest. And I want to make it abundantly clear that there is, in fact, a very clear and distinct line between those two things. However, as a sidebar, I do really like the theory that schizophrenic people may be possibly viewing life through a different filter than the rest of us. When you consider the fact that less than a week ago, National Geographic published an article that says scientists believe 25% of the universe is made up of dark matter, which is a mysterious, invisible, and unexplainable substance that's around us all the time. It definitely makes things more interesting. And to put it another way, matter is the stuff that's all around you all the time. Everything that you see in front of you right now is made up of matter. Your car, your phone, your desk, your house, all of that is made up of matter. And yet, that same National Geographic article says that only 5% of the known universe is made up of that kind of matter. Dark matter makes up five times as much as regular matter. And yet, we can't see it. We have no idea what it is, but it's there. Maybe schizophrenic people are just living a version of life where they're experiencing a higher volume of that dark matter. Maybe they're able to interact with it in some way. Because the part of the brain that filters out normally doesn't work as well. So they are receiving some of that dark matter and they can't decipher it. So they present as schizophrenic. I'm not saying that's what's happening. I don't know. But I'm just telling you, these are some things that I find fascinating. But anyway, back to my point about this other theory of deja vu that I find really interesting. So there are some people who believe deja vu could be related to parallel universe theory. For those of you who aren't familiar, parallel universe theory, or what is known as the multiverse, is a theory that's been brought to attention by some very notable theoretical physicists. The theory says that there could be infinite copies of our universe, and each one varies just slightly from the next. In fact, it varies so slightly that, for example, in one universe, everything would be exactly the same. Exactly the same. Except, 
I might be wearing a blue shirt right now instead of a gray one. That would be the only change. Otherwise, everything else is exactly the same. And those changes could go on infinitely. Maybe instead of having dark hair, I have light hair. Maybe instead of using this particular microphone, I have a different microphone. Maybe the NBA has one less team. There's all of these possible changes infinitely just that relate to me and the world around me, let alone everybody else. So it truly is an infinite amount of parallel universes in this theory. Now, here's where dark matter actually comes back into play because some of these incredibly similar parallel universes could be occurring all around us at any time. And we might be having moments where we're plugged into those other universes or they're overlapping with us. And the theory suggests that deja vu could be us tapping into a memory of an experience that we had in one of those parallel universes. It's like a sort of weird window into another life that we're currently living congruent to this one. And I know that's very, very trippy, but when you think about it, it does make a little bit of sense. After all, in this theory, the parallel universe would be nearly identical to our current experience. I mean, think about it. You would genuinely not be able to tell the difference between the two universes if the only difference was that you wore a different color shirt on any random day of your life. And so a memory from that universe that snuck into this one wouldn't seem alien or strange. It would just seem like you had already lived in that moment before, like how deja vu feels. And that would be because you've actually lived that experience just in a parallel universe. For some reason, the memory has just shifted over to your reality right now. Either way, no matter which explanation of deja vu you believe, I think the most important thing is the fact that we don't have an explanation for it. And that's awesome. Because we're going to keep looking, and hopefully one day we'll be able to explain it. But if the simple topic of deja vu can raise this many questions, then I think that's great because it's going to light a spark of exploration, and who knows what other things scientists are going to discover while they search for the explanation of deja vu. But at the end of the day, honestly, what do I know, right? I'm just on here talking shit. What do I know? Talking about parallel universes and stuff. Like, at the end of the day, what do I know? I'm just like a regular guy, right? My fiance has told me on numerous occasions that I don't know how to load a dishwasher. And to be honest with you guys, there have been a few times where I've just sort of looked at it and been like, you know what? She's right. <laughs> like, this makes no sense. I don't know what I was thinking here. So it's like, to be honest, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about at the end of the day. But in this situation, science does support what I'm saying. Sometimes the search for one qu answer to a question, like the question of what causes deja vu, ends up leading to the discovery of something else. And that's really, really cool. After all, insulin and penicillin were found by accident. And look at how those discoveries turned out. So I hope scientists keep trying to find the true cause of deja vu. I mean, we can ultimately find the answer to all these questions. All we have to do is keep learning. As always, shout out to all my family and friends. You're the realest people I've ever met in my life, honestly, and that's why I am who I am today. Thank you to everybody for tuning in. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Um, that way you'll be able to get notifications of new episodes whenever I put them up. Until next time. Keep asking questions and keep trying to grow your own knowledge base. Like I always say, I think a more curious and educated population is what's ultimately going to move society forward. See you guys next time.